The M1 carbine hardly ever worked, he later recalled. Today he even goes so far as to refer to it as useless, saying it had no firepower. One particular incident settled the issue for Parkinson once and for all. He fired four shots into an escaping enemy soldier, but the 30 carbine bullets made him only stumble momentarily before he continued running. Another Marine stepped forward with an M1 rifle and fired one shot that dropped the man like a sack of potatoes. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on InRange TV. Today we are taking a look at a new production M1 carbine from Inland Manufacturing. Now, Carl, you're wearing some bling here. Yeah, this is not stolen valor. Okay. I am a decorated M1 carbine shooter. Do tell. I shot the very first CMP Games M1 carbine match in 2006 in Camp Perry, Ohio as part of the national matches. Nice. And in that match, um, somehow I managed to place 30th out of 479 competitors. That's not bad. Which is in the top 10% which earns you a gold. Nice. CMP medal. So I'm, you must like the carbine. I don't. I kind of dislike the carbine quite a bit. <laughs> you kind of hate the carbine. Actually, uh, hate's not the right word. I hate the BAR. The carbine is dubious to me. Why do you hate America? I don't hate America. Those two guns, <laughs> we won in spite of them, not because of them. Um, that being said, so it's interesting. So in first, the first year of the carbine match in 2006, I placed in top, you know, 30, yeah. 30th and got a gold medal. The next year, I, sh I went, oh, man, first of all, we'll get into the match, but the match was kind of goofy. You're sitting there trying to shoot this rifle in a precision position, adjusting the sights. We'll get into that later. Uh, on this little tiny dot target at 100 yards. Uh -huh. And I'm like, well, you know, I got a gold medal last year. Why don't I get another one? So I did it in 2007, uh -huh. and I didn't do it again after that. The gun failed during the rapid course of fire, as I have seen many M1s do, mm. and it cost me and put me into bronze. So I have a bronze medal on the wall as well. I don't wear that one. I only wear the gold bling. <laughs> But, but that's going to get into what we want to say about M1 carbines in general, but let's yeah. review the gun too. Okay, so first off, this is one of actually quite a few reproduction M1 carbines that are on the market today. Uh, this particular one, is it's marked Inland Manufacturing Company. Mm -hmm. Now, Inland was one of the primary manufacturers of original M1 carbines. They were a, a subdivision of GM. And uh, the current Inland is in no way related to GM or the original Inland. It's basically a case where someone bought... Uh, the trademarks, and then started making M1 carbines under that trademark name. So it's like Twinkies and Ding Dongs. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, sweet and tasty. Uh, sure. <laughs> I think Hostess makes those in Mexico now. Anyways. Um, so several different companies have done something like this. They've bought up a, a World War II era trademark mm -hmm. and then started making guns under that trademark. Correct me if I'm wrong. Springfield of today isn't Springfield of yesterday. Correct. Okay. Um, well, in fact, originally Springfield was a government armory. Right. But and it's now a private company. It is now a commercial a, endeavor called Springfield. Right. And it's a different group. They're yep. not related. Same thing. Um, Same situation. Car company bought the auto ordinance trademarks. Mm -hmm. So they make auto ordinance guns, but they are not auto ordinance. Okay. Um, and... Uh, Jason River Armory makes Rockola brand M1 carbines. Also name, not necessarily original company. Exactly. Fantastic company in that case. Um, and, and again, they bought the trademark so they could use it to make M1 carbines. It's an amazing thing to say. A bit. Ra brand name recognition goes long and far in any marketplace. Yes, it does. Yep. Because which are you more likely to be interested in buying? An Inland carbine or a Rockola carbine or a Car Arms carbine? Or, or this universal thing. Yeah, we won't. Okay. Well, I think so we should talk we about should that touch later. on that. Yep. Um, the M1 carbine has been around for a very long time. They made something like 6.2 million of them during World War II and, and thereafter. Uh, and they didn't need all that many. So after the war, they were given away as military aid to other countries. They were sold on the surplus market. They were all over the place. Kind of like rapeseed oil. Yes. Interesting. And yes, indeed. Uh, they have dried up of late. Um, in fact, they were, in some ways, they were drying up decades ago. Companies started making... M1 carbines from parts, and then they ran out of parts, so they started making their own parts, and eventually you ended up with completely new manufacturer M1 carbines. Uh, the Universal Company is best or worst known for them for not... They, they made some actual improvements to the design. They changed the gun a little bit. Um, and generally, they don't have a very good reputation. Okay. They do work sometimes, not very often. They changed some stuff. They, like, they changed what would have been the selector level or something like the selector level on an M2 carbine into mm -hmm. a bolt hold open. Yep, a little bit. And they changed it into two recoil springs instead of one. Yep. And they modified the actual carrier to be cut out here to be hollowed out. They did some stuff. Right, they made the, the bolt, the op rod out of a stamped piece instead mm -hmm. of a forging. Yep. Uh, now, what makes these popular to a lot of people is people recognize that negative um, uh, reputation, and they like the idea of getting a proper mil-spec M1 carbine. And that's pretty much what this is. Um, there are a few differences. The receivers are cast and machined instead of forged and machined. And I think that is 
absolutely a meaningless difference. Forging will make you a stronger part. You tell me the last time you heard of anyone kabooming an M1 carbine receiver. No, I was just thinking about the front sight, but we'll get to that we'll, in a minute. We'll get to that. That's that's the downside of casting, but mm -hmm. not, okay. not as it relates to the receiver. Sure. Um, okay, I'll agree with you on the purposes of strength of receiver versus casting. I got right. it. I mean, Ruger made an entire gun industry based around casting right. or inje injection casting parts. Right. Yeah. So uh, Honestly, I don't want to give anyone any ideas. I bet you could figure out a way to make one of these things out of aluminum and it would work with M1 carbine. Probably. Okay. It's not a high pressure cartridge. No. I, you don't need a forged receiver on an M1 carbine. Agreed. Um, other than that, all parts on this are, are new manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly all of the functional pressure bearing parts, which is cool. Uh, these reportedly, and I'm going to take American Rifleman's word for it, they shoot better than the, the originals often do. Uh, Inland says that that's because they have a more appropriate twist uh, to the rifling for M1 carbine projectiles, and they're better bedded. Uh, American Rifleman was getting about two minute of angle. Um, I, we, we did not bother testing this for accuracy on groups, because that's not really the point of an M1 I'm making carbine. a funny face so you can't see, because I'm skeptical. But, nope. okay. Yeah. Maybe it did. We didn't test it, but... no, nope. because we don't really care. The no, we don't care. You're precision right. Precision shooting with an M1 carbine isn't I, really I, the I'm point. just thinking of how, it, how those ones I shot and won gold with grouped at Camp Perry. And how was... Now, that was an original World War II gun. It was. That they, was an original... They say they've made changes to this that make it perform All right, all right. All right. Maybe that's so. true. Okay. Now, all of that is a moot point when it comes to... A couple of issues we had with the sights in particular. So you were making a little a grimacing face mm -hmm. about the front sight. Tell it, me. We just noticed this actually just now starting to mm -hmm. get ready to film is that you used this in a match and I didn't but I was aiming mm -hmm. to do some video with you on this and the front sight being a cast part had, I was just in the right light conditions, a seam down the middle of the front sight which lit up like almost like a, a freaking, um, what do you call it? Uh, a, um, one of those fiber optic things? Yeah, like a fiber optic. But I was sitting there looking down the sights, and I'm looking through the peep, which, by the way, the sight picture on M1 it's carbine is terrible. not good anyway. The yeah. wood's in the way, and all you see is like a post with some of an ear. But that's normal. They're all like that. But that front post was there, and there was a seam with a giant white light in the middle being lit up by the sun. And that's part of a cast part problem. That seam, if I were doing cast parts, I would think of all the parts that you would want to do a little final finishing on. That front sight would make a lot of sense. Or put the seam somewhere other than the face of the sight. I was surprised. It really, yeah. I didn't expect it. I'm like, what the heck? And I showed it to you and you're like, oh yeah, there's wow. a seam right yeah. there. Interesting. Uh, we also had problems with the rear sight. Um, this happened while I was shooting a two gun match with this rifle. For one thing, the, the aperture slides forward and back to adjust for range. And it sometimes just moves on its own. Which is Nope. Low and right. Low and right. Hit. Right. Right. Is your windage off? Something's wrong. You got one left, right? Yeah. Hit. Under the wall. I don't know what was up with my sights there, but I'm holding way under and a little bit to the left of these things. Who knows? It's a carbine. Oh, my sights at 300, that's why. Oh, look at that. It moved. Right there. Let's uh, push that guy back to where he's supposed to be. Whoops. That's the advantage of quickly adjustable sights. Yes, they quickly adjust whether you want them to or not. Yeah. Um, I, would very... say, I would say I have a problem with the design of this yeah. site. Um, the USGI design, this was a this was a, uh, a deprecation of the original design. The original right. design was better. Yep. This thing is inclined, even if it isn't loose, you can knock it or bump it while you're moving and it'll do this. Yep. Plus, I will also tell you that from shooting this at distance, which I have done, um, these one, two, threes don't mean Anything. Nothing. <laughs> you literally, you're like, one is sort of there, and two is a little too high. Uh, they don't really matter. You're not getting on a combat gun, which this is a, what, a 200-yard gun at the at, most? At tops, yeah. Why the heck does this thing go out to 300. 300 and even be adjustable at all? In fact, there's one and 1 1.5. Yep. What? Over-engineered. That's not the fault of this reproduction. That's a fault of some guy sitting at a desk thinking he was making something better. Right. The original M1 carbines actually had 
a, uh, a, a fixed rear sight. Mm. It was a two position peep sight that you could flip from one position to the other. Just like the original AR-15. Yeah. Weird. Interesting. And this one suddenly turned into an adjustable so, elevation and adjustable windage. Yep. I would argue neither of which are appropriate on this gun. But the American School of Marksmanship says you have to have that. Right. So this is not a regard. This is not a problem with the reproduction. It's a problem just with the concept. Right. Yeah. So I suppose what we should say is in general, there are two problems, two types of problems that we ran into with this carbine. We have problems that are authentic to the original guns, which mm -hmm. on a proper reproduction you would expect to have. And that's things like the, the pointlessness of this elevation adjustment. But it's correct that it should be there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we also ran into problems that are just the fault of the guys who made this particular one. Things okay. like the seam in the front sight. Uh, my entire rear sight is loose now. It slides about an eighth of an inch left to right. Uh, because it's not peened in the dovetail Which well. Which an eighth of an inch on that sight or a, a radius lot. of that is like, pew! Well, that destroyed me on one stage in uh, the two-gun You match. have no idea where you're going. Because I didn't realize that it had An eighth suddenly... of an inch is a significant amount of windage even at 50 yards. Yeah. Yep. Um, and reliability issues. Now, the original carbines pretty much always had reliability issues. Yeah. Um, 